Hi, in this video, we're going to be working in Chapter 4, Section 5 on conditional probability. Um, I prepared uh, a little note for you. It's similar to one of the problems in the notes, but I kind of took it off in a different direction. So I will share my screen and this is, um, you can look for a, a PDF in the day's activities that's associated with the video. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And what I wanted to do was jump in with the idea of a conditional probability um, before I kind of um, give you the formula and the definite, you know, the mathematical um, equations and all. So um, I just wanted to look. Uh, bring your attention to this um, table, and then this table are represented a hundred athletes, and they have um, two qualitative variables displayed in the chart: whether they are right or left-handed, and whether they are on the baseball or football team. So. Um, we're going to just kind of jump right in and think about those probabilities from contingency tables. So one of these is in the notes. I look for the probability, uh, compute the probability of left-handed. And um, so I look over here and I see that there are 20 uh, of the athletes are left-handed and there's a total of 100 athletes. So the probability of left-handed is 20 over 100. Um, okay. And then, um, the probability of baseball, B is for baseball, so the probability of baseball is, let's go ahead, so there's a total of 50 baseball players over 100 athletes. Okay, so let's look at what this is, left-handed and baseball. So here are all of our left-handeds, right, and here are all of our baseball, so coming straight down here. Okay, so we are looking for the probability of left-handed and baseball. So that would be these guys right in there, those 12. So there's 12 uh, athletes that are both left-handed and baseball and um, 12 divided by 100. Please uh, represent these in two decimal places, but just uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm keeping them in fractions today. Um, and so here we are looked, looking for the probability of uh, left-handed or baseball. And then we see that word or, and we know that we have to think um, which addition rule do we use? The general addition rule or the special addition rule? And it's always important um, to think about whether or not the two events are mutually exclusive. In this case, they are not mutually exclusive because there are these 12 individuals that are both left-handed and baseball. So left-handed, that event, and baseball, that event, um, they are not mutually exclusive. So we're going to go ahead and use the general addition rule. We're looking for the probability of left-handed plus the probability of um, baseball minus the probability of left-handed and baseball. Okay, let's go ahead and um, calculate that. So we have probability, I'm just gonna bring it right down here. Probability of left-handed we said was 20 over 100. Uh, baseball is 50 over 100. That was those 50, and now we want to subtract the 12 that overlapped, 12 over 100. Okay, so um, that's the OR probability. Take a moment if you want. Pa I'm going to pause and just fill in um, fill in those decimal places. Okay, so I just re-expressed um, the fractions in decimal form, um, that's pretty much, 
more similar to what we usually work with. And um, so just substituting in for the general addition rule for each of these terms, we get point five eight. Okay, now um, we want to consider this concept um, that you are given some information. You're given that, um, for example, you know that the player, the, the athlete is a baseball player. And so given that he's a baseball player, now you want to find out what is the probability that he's left-handed. So we want to introduce this concept, this conditional probability here, so that we um, denote with this vertical bar. Okay, so the probability of left-handed given baseball. So there's two couple of methods. I want to start start off with the what I like. I think it's it's uh, very intuitive. Um, <clears throat> is shrinking the sample space. So if we normally would have this distribution to be working, to be pulling our, considering what our athlete would be um, on the table, we would have all this information. But if we know that um, the athlete is a baseball player, then we really don't need this part. We really don't need that. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> right? we're only really focused on the what's going on on baseball. So over here, um, I consider this method one, shrinking the sample space. So whatever the conditional um, event is, whatever information that gives you, it leads you to a smaller, um, a smaller sample space. And so in this case, this is what we know. And we want to know the probability of left-handed given baseball. So we see there are 12 left-handed um, athletes over a total of 50 baseball players, right? 12 left-handed um, baseball players over 50 baseball players. Okay, so that's one method. It's very intuitive. You just kind of ignore the column that you know didn't occur um, and re you know just think about what you see and the, that's left. Okay, the other method, which you'll also probably run into this one on my stat lab, is a use of the formula. So if you guys could all take a moment and open your um, formula sheet. All right, so. I'm gonna bring mine over. Maybe for a quick moment. Okay, so there's mine. And um, here's the formula we're working with conditional probability rule. I'm gonna bring that back. All right, so um, I just reproduced it here on this little handout. And so um, remember what we were looking for, left-handed given baseball. So the probability of left-handed given baseball is the probability, the and probability in the numerator and in the denominator is the event that you have conditioned upon, right? So you're conditioning on B, so P of B goes in the denominator. Okay, let's figure out what this is. What is the probability of left-handed and baseball? Scrolling up here, left-handed and baseball, we already determined that, 0.12. Right, and then the probability of baseball, uh, we had as 0.50. Okay. Okay. We can go ahead and calculate that ratio.
And I notice up here we never did um, that did that calculation out to two decimal places. Let's go ahead and do that. 12 divided by 50. Oh, 0 0.24. Isn't that reassuring that the two methods, method one, shrinking the sample space, yields uh, the, the probability of left-handed given baseball of 0.24. And then using the formula here yields the same. So that's all I really wanted to say. Um, I will see you in the next chapter.